I'm just about to start a large bespoke wardrobe build and today's video is all about this temporary workshop space that I've just constructed to cut and prepare all my timber in. I've been wanting to invest in something like this for quite a while now because any of you who watch my videos a lot will know I do a lot of my cutting on my work table outside and I'm constantly running the gauntlet with the weather and having to carry things inside when it starts raining. Also the garage where I could be doing my cutting is full of rubbish and I don't want to cover that in dust and it's quite a long way from the house. And finally the bedroom itself where I'm installing the bespoke wardrobes is pretty much finished so I don't want to be doing a lot of cutting and messy work in that room itself. So back in August I bought this three meter square gazebo from eBay for £146. It would have been a bit cosy but just about adequate for the wardrobe build. But pretty soon afterwards I got contacted by Machine Mart and an opportunity came up to try a far more sturdy all-weather garage workshop. And this at four and a half by three meters, the smallest in their SIG range. Although they also have a smaller 2.4 meter square motorcycle shelter or shed. In spite of my gazebo purchase, I couldn't turn down the opportunity to try this out for my bespoke wardrobe build. And so here we are today. They did supply it to me free of charge, but as usual, Machine Mart don't have any editorial input or control over this video. First observation about this is the sheer weight of it. But 52 kilograms, not for the faint hearted. The substantial tubular frame of the garage workshop is responsible for much of that weight. Badly drafted, confusing instruction manuals are totally unnecessary and a constant source of frustration to me. But this one was comprehensive and easy to follow. You've got a pretty extensive parts list with the potentially most confusing elements being the tubular frame structure, each individually numbered. So provided you're organized and lay out everything in order before you start, the build is pretty straightforward. The next job was to prepare the roof assembly by laying out each part in the location where I was going to construct the workshop. I used a couple of tape measures to roughly mark two sides of the perimeter of the workshop. I then assembled the roof frame by connecting the parts together. Spring buttons on the relevant tubes help to knit the frame together, which is useful for the next stage in the build. Next, it was time to attach the legs, and the four centre legs have foot plates which are connected to the legs with bolts, with split pins to prevent the bolt from coming loose. And I should point out this is ice forming on the structure, not some problem with the paint system. Attaching the legs to the roof frame is ideally a two-man job, but I thought I'd do it on my own to demonstrate the ease with which you can put this structure together. Step four was to square off and anchor the frames. I've got to say I spent ages trying to get the frames as square as possible, which you do by trying to make the diagonals identical and the lengths and widths of the workshop to match up to within an inch or so, which is a little tricky on a structure that has more curves than straight edges to measure off. It's worth obsessing over this though because it makes the subsequent stages much easier. Now, one of the benefits of this workshop over, say, your typical gazebo you buy on eBay is the sheer sturdiness and strength of it, particularly in high winds. And where it derives this strength, in addition, of course, to the strength of the tubular structure itself, is through the anchoring system where you screw these removable anchors into the ground on the inside of the shelter. And then as the diagram shows, you attach them to the four corner bent legs with the cable and cable clamps provided. The problem is my workshop is plonked onto an old patio. So I decided to improvise by fixing down each leg to the patio with wall plugs and screws. I drilled into the stone with my SDS drill using a seven millimeter diameter drill bit and then anchored the screws in place with my little 12 volt Milwaukee drill driver. If you haven't already watched it, you might check out my recent video on why this is such a great drill driver combination, a link to which is coming up on screen now. Before securing each leg to the patio, I checked it was parallel to the previous one I'd fixed down by measuring the gap at the top and bottom and double checking with the spirit level. I don't care much for this patio and will be ripping it out at some point, but even if your patio is your pride and joy, chances are a bit of filler and you'll hardly notice the eight screw holes as and when you take down the workshop. With most of the hard work done, it was time to move on to installing the front and back covers. And what I was particularly impressed with was the combination of strong webbing and the ratchet straps to securely fasten these front and back covers in place. In case any of you were wondering earlier if by screwing the workshop down to the patio, I was impeding the operation of these ratchet straps, I was careful to check that the hooks of the ratchet straps were only designed to fasten to the side holes on the corner bent legs rather than also through the top where the screw went so that the design wasn't in any way compromised. 
Installing the main cover is a two-person job, but a straightforward exercise once I had tied two lengths of spare rope to the eyelets on the roof cover. And then it was just a question of inserting four more ratchet straps as before, this time to the front of the corner bent legs to secure down the roof cover. What gives this roof cover its real tautness and the frame of the workshop its final rigidity is the cover rails which are slotted into the cover and then bolted to the legs as you can see here. And with the construction of the workshop complete, I've erected an old work light on the apex tube of the roof structure and a few zip ties so that I can position my battery powered work light at different points in the room. So that's it, the workshop's been up for a week now and it's already been buffeted by some pretty inhospitable weather and taken it all in its stride. I've set up my folding workbench in here so I can rip down these full sheets of MDF and with the open end to the tent, I can effortlessly clean away all the dust with my Ryobi leaf blower. I've been scratching my head about how I could get a little bit of heat in here while I'm working, and I bought this Little Devil propane burner for £103, as I thought it would be the quickest and most efficient way of heating a room. But it's a little too noisy for the videoing, and I have some concerns about using propane in this reasonably small, albeit well ventilated space. So I've settled on this infrared heater, protected with an RCD at the plug end. Whilst the pivoting version would, I think, have been better, but is currently out of stock, I'm so far very happy with this and it's going to create quite a cosy space, particularly when the door is folded down. And I'll be talking about the heating, I'm sure, as my wardrobe build videos progress. Any criticisms? Well, the front door needs a rod in the bottom pocket, as otherwise it's quite hard to roll up single-handed. And the Velcro at the top could, I think, be an inch or two longer, just to make it a little bit easier to fasten the door in place. But I'm going to be very critical, a couple of the spring buttons on the structure have tarnished, although this doesn't affect the operation of the structure. But it might perhaps be something the machine might need to look at. Overall though, it does feel like a proper workshop space rather than just a tent in the garden. And you'll be seeing a lot more of this room as my wardrobe series progresses. So that's it for today. I hope you found this video useful. If, like me, you were thinking of constructing some sort of temporary space, either for your car or, as in my case, as a workshop space. Details of all today's tools will, as usual, be in the description below the video, which, don't forget, you can access on your computer by clicking on the Show More button and your smartphone by clicking on this little arrow. And if you've liked today's video, it'd be great if you could give it the thumbs up below. And finally, if you're new to my channel, as I always say, it would mean so much to me to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here. And don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. See you soon.